Today we're uncovering the fascinating origins of Yan Wang, the god of death, and how this revered figure symbolizes justice and fairness in the afterlife. Stay tuned! In the world of Chinese myths, there's this big boss of the afterlife named King Yan, also called Yan Luo, which is just another way to say King Yama if you're into Sanskrit. Picture this guy. He's huge, with a face that's always in a scowl, eyes popping out, and sporting a massive beard. He dresses like he means business, wearing these old-school robes and a special hat that screams I'm the king, because it literally has the king character on it. You'll see his face on something called Hell Money, which is kind of like play money people use in rituals, except his face is where you'd usually see a president or some important political figure. Now King Yan's job isn't just to sit on a throne and look intimidating. He's got a big role as the judge of everyone who's passed away. Think of him as the principal who's also your homeroom teacher, making sure everything's running smoothly and everyone's getting to where they need to be in the afterlife. He's got this classic male look going on all the time, and he's backed up by a team that sounds like it came straight out of a superhero comic. There's a judge who's always ready with a pen and a ledger that lists everyone's name and when they're supposed to, you know, expire. Then there are these two intense guys named Oxhead and Horseface, kind of the muscle of the operation, who escort the souls one by one to face Jan's judgment. Here's where it gets interesting. If you were a good person, did your deeds, and lived a decent life, Jan's got you covered. He might hook you up with a sweet deal for your next life, or even give you a ticket back to your old life for another round. But if you were up to no good, breaking hearts, rules, and basically being a troublemaker, Jan's not the type to let it slide. He'll dish out punishments like it's going out of style, sending you to a not-so-nice future life or making sure your afterlife is as uncomfortable as possible. Then, there are these two intimidating figures named Oxhead and Horseface. Yep, you heard that right. These aren't your average Joes. Oxhead has, well, the head of an ox, and Horseface has the face of a horse. They're not the kind of characters you'd want to bump into on a dark night. But in the underworld, they're super important. Their job is to escort souls who've just passed away right up to Yan Wang so he can decide what happens to them next. Imagine them as the bouncers of the afterlife, making sure only the VIPs, which is pretty much everyone after they die, get to meet the big boss. Yan Wang might not have a family in the traditional sense, but with his trusty scribe and the dynamic duo of Oxhead and Horseface by his side, he's never really alone. They make sure everything in the underworld runs smoothly, from keeping track of who's due to arrive to making sure they get a proper welcome. It's a tight-knit team, working behind the scenes to manage the afterlife's ins and outs. Let's now dive into the Chinese Buddhist idea of the afterlife, which is super interesting and a bit different from what you might be used to. So, in this belief system, there's this place called DU, which is essentially hell, but with a twist. Picture it like a really scary video game with 10 levels, each one scarier and tougher than the one before. DU is made up of these 10 layers, and each layer has its own boss, kind of like the levels in a video game. At the top of this underworld hierarchy is the big boss, Yan Wang. He's like the final boss in the game, overseeing everything in DU. Now, there was this poet back in the 8th century named Han Shan, who was kind of like an old-school influencer. He'd tell people to live good lives, do the right thing, and be virtuous. Why? because he didn't want them to end up in DU getting into trouble with Yan Wang. Han Shan was pretty clear. If you mess up, you're going to have to deal with Yan Wang and nobody wants that. Here's where things get a bit different from what some other beliefs might say about the afterlife. In this system, everybody ends up in DU when they die. But don't freak out yet. It's not as bad as it sounds. The thing is, you're not stuck there forever. How long you stay and how rough your time is going to be depends on what you did while you were alive. If you were a good person, you might get a temporary pass to heaven, hang out there for a bit, and then come back to Earth as a human, or maybe even get out of the whole reincarnation cycle altogether. That's the best case scenario. But if you were up to no good, things are going to be a bit tougher. Yan Wang is going to have a chat with you, asking if you ever thought about the spiritual fallout of your actions. Let's be honest, if you're in this situation, the answer is probably no. After you admit to that, you're not going straight to punishment. First, you have to wander through this maze-like hell, which is confusing and scary, 
before you even get to the part where you're punished. And believe me, there are a lot of different punishments down there, tailored to fit whatever wrongs you've done. So, the message here is pretty clear. Live a good life, be kind, and do the right thing. Not just because it's nice to be nice, but also because you really don't want to deal with the aftermath in DU. Yan Wang and his crew have a whole system set up to deal with people who didn't think about the consequences of their actions, and it's a lot easier to just be good from the start. If someone was a hypocrite, pretending to be something they're not, their punishment was like something out of a grim cooking show. They'd be put into giant metal pots and steamed alive. Imagine being in a huge pot, the kind you might see in a cartoon, but this is no joke. It's serious business down in DU. Arsonists, the folks who liked to play with fire a bit too much and ended up burning things down, had their own special treatment. They were tied up to pillars made of super hot glowing copper. Picture being tied to a giant red hot metal pole that's too hot to touch. That was their deal for eternity. Now, for murderers, especially the ones who used knives, their eternal hiking adventure was straight up nightmare fuel. They had to climb mountains made entirely of razor-sharp blades. Think about trying to climb a mountain, but instead of rocks, it's all knives. Every step would be a new level of pain. The worst of the worst, those who committed the five grave offenses like killing their parents, harming enlightened beings, shedding a Buddha's blood, or causing major trouble in the Buddhist community, got VIP treatment from Yan Wang himself. Their punishment? They were turned into lesser animals or insects in their next lives. It's like hitting the reset button but in the worst possible way, starting over as something far from human because of their actions. But here's the twist. Yan Wang wasn't sitting pretty above all this. He wasn't just handing out punishments. He was also on the receiving end. Despite being in charge, he wasn't chilling in some comfy office. Nope, three times a day he'd be strapped down to a scalding hot metal surface and to top it off, they'd pour molten metal down his throat. That's why his skin was always depicted as red. It's a vivid reminder that even the ruler of the underworld wasn't free from suffering. This setup in DU is all about showing that actions have consequences, and even those in power aren't exempt from the rules. It's a system designed to make you think twice before doing something you might regret, with punishments that are as creative as they are terrifying. The message is clear, live a good life, or be prepared for a rough time in the afterlife. And even if you're the one in charge, like Yan Wang, you're not getting off easy. It's a tough lesson on responsibility, power, and the importance of doing the right thing. Despite his fearsome reputation, Yan Wang isn't the villain of Chinese mythology. Interestingly, in some stories, he's seen as too soft-hearted, leading to his demotion to the fifth king of hell. This twist reveals that the title of Yan Wang is not permanent, it's more like a rotating position. After serving time as the ruler of the underworld, a king of hell could either return to earth in a new life or exit the cycle of reincarnation altogether. In a fascinating turn, the role of Yan Wang could even be awarded to mortals who led exceptionally honorable lives. This concept suggests that ruling the underworld isn't just for supernatural beings, but can be a reward for human integrity and goodness. Thus, Yan Wang symbolizes justice and fairness, underscoring the belief that those who live righteously might one day find themselves in a position to judge souls, maintaining the balance between good and evil in the afterlife. So Yan Wang isn't about spreading fear or punishment without cause. Instead, he represents a system where fairness rules, and even the position of the underworld's king is attainable by those who've proven their merit through a life well lived. It's a reminder that in Chinese mythology, justice and moral integrity hold the keys to the highest of honors, even that of the King of Hell. Thanks for exploring the intriguing world of Yan Wang with us. If you enjoyed diving into the myths and morals of the afterlife, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share for more captivating tales from the depths of Chinese mythology. See you next time.